60 minutes overtime. I have a pretty terrific job, and this job has taken me all over the world. But the impenetrable farce is one of the most beautiful places I have ever seen. This week on 60 Minutes, we went to southwestern Uganda to a remote part of the country where the impenetrable forest is located. And we went with American virus trackers, people who are trying to locate and stop the next virus from jumping from wildlife to humans. It was about a full day of travel from New York to Amsterdam, Amsterdam to Kigali, Rwanda, Rwanda to Entebbe in Uganda. We then fly from Entebbe to Kahihi in a very small commuter jet. It's about an hour and a half, maybe close to two hours of flying. And then we have another hour and so to drive to Windy over rutted dirt roads. And it's just this otherworldly vision. And you finally get to Windy, and Windy was like a garden. And it's just lush green with flowers blooming everywhere. It was, it was quite magnificent. The impenetrable forest is as it sounds. It was dense and thick with vines and giant ferns and fir trees and hardwood trees and so thick at some points that the sun couldn't get through. Roots everywhere, you're climbing over roots. And the American doctors we were with, some of them are from an organization called Gorilla Doctors, and when they first started monitoring the gorillas, back in the 80s, there were about 250 gorillas. Today, there are 459, and the population is growing. So they have witnessed a real success story. We're also with park rangers. They keep in touch with the families of gorillas. The park ranger who was with us was uh, Wilbur Tumwesigai, and it turns out that this ranger knows how to speak to gorillas. And I have to say, I did not believe it at first until I saw it. He was able to call a family of gorillas to come to us and told them that we were safe, that there was no harm going to come to them. You see the trees moving, but the wind isn't blowing, so you're like, what is it? And then it comes into focus. These are huge, huge primates in the trees. And they came down, and they were within 10 to 15 feet of us. They were a family of about 20. They were eating and grooming, and the mothers were breastfeeding the babies. The babies were playing, the teenagers were roughhousing, and the big silverback was just sort of sitting watching guard over the whole thing, and they were right in front of us. It was magical. He told us that there are about 14 different sounds that the gorillas make that the humans have identified, and he has mastered those 14 sounds. When we want to tell them, please calm down, we are here and we are friends, we just say <clears throat> And most times when we do, we make that sound, we hear them re replying and uh, they feel comfortable and they know we are there and they know we are friends. Then there are some other sounds which they make, for example, if the silverback is telling them that uh, we have to go. If the silverback yeah, is telling, the telling group, them, please, we have been resting and this is time to start time to moving. Go. So he can tell them, <clears throat> so he's telling them, please get ready, we are ready to go. Then there are some other sounds which they make when they are enjoying food. Like uh, they happen to get a tree with fruits, like the sound, first sound they made when they were climbing in the trees. 
So that means they are enjoying the food they are eating. It sounds like humans going, mm, yeah. Yeah. Mm, this is good. Mm, mm, this is good.